What do you think he means by that great sentence, the unexamined life is not worth living? Uh, what sort of examination? Who examines? Is this only for a leisured class? Is this only for people who are already privileged? Does it apply to the slaves at the time or metaphorically the slaves now? Can you just attack that sentence? Well, I think Socrates meant by the unexamined life is not worth living that if you don't think about your values and your aims, your goals and, and what sort of person to be, and how to live your life, then you've, you've yielded up the direction of your life to, to chance and to others and to the decisions that other people make. And then you, you're, you're no better ready than an animal being driven about by things that happen around you. And you've lost autonomy. You're not the governor of yourself. This idea of being an autonomous and thoughtful individual who makes choices that you've reflected on seemed to him, as it has to many moral philosophers since, to be a tremendously important value. And that, that it doesn't matter so much whether um, you're, you're uh, happy doing it or unhappy doing it. More important than that is that you are directing your own fate. How many, Julian Bagini, how many people can do that, though? Uh, you, 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 you do this, you do that, you do the other. And in a, suspiciously like the advice given in uh, agony columns to a certain extent there, Anthony. We're a bit, I'd say, we're a bit near the, the, the verge there, but we come back to that. How many people can do that? Uh, you know, a person wakes up in... <sighs> Around the globe, I mean, half, three quarters of people, they have to get on with what they're given, which is often nothing like what they want, and just buckle down and do it, or give up. Uh, the examined life, the deciding what your ambition is and objective, great, but where does it take you for most people? Well, I think one of the problems here is that this quote is wheeled out quite often to justify philosophy. People say, why do philosophy? Well, you know, look at what Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. I think the point is there are lots of ways of examining life. I mean, first of all, that, the phrase, the examined life, I think we tend to think of it as being about self-examination and self-understanding. I don't think we should limit it in that way. Examining life is about examining all parts of life. Science is part of examining life. It's about examining the world around us. And that feeds into self-understanding, obviously, because we are parts of the natural world. But you know, one can examine one's own life, I think, in any number of ways. Um, if you read literature in a sense you are examining life um if you just sit down and talk with friends of, often you are examining life so i think we shouldn't get the idea that the examined life has to entail has to involve um high level philosophy i think that it can involve many different things but isn't he saying that the examined life is worth uh is worth doing just to examine life. It doesn't have to lead to the one thing or another, just the mere exam, not the mere, the examination of it in itself is sufficient. Yes, I think there's something in here. I mean, Aristotle put it in slightly differently, perhaps more explicitly, that in his view, what made human beings distinctive was their capacity for rational thought. And he thought that um, any creature um, functions and flourishes at its best when it does what is distinctive to its own nature. So in that sense, if we are to be truly human, we have to use that act active part of us, which is distinctively human. We have to use our rational capacities. So it's by thinking and examining that we become most fully human. I think there's something of that. Socrates, you know, in Plato, we don't find it articulated in quite that way. But I think that's part of the idea. Did the Greeks think that philosophy was the best way to examine life? And in, in